Hello and welcome. I want a file folder. This is my last file folder and we're not shopping again. So I took my book apart and scanned it. I don't have a stapler long enough to put it back together so I want to put it in a folder. And I was going to just use the last file folder. And I thought, you know, I'll just measure it and make one. So I have this stuff left from a rock and roll. Where did I set it? I need to put it up. I've made my son birthday cards out of it. And I think I did only one page in a scrapbook. That I'd started when he was a teenager. I'm not much for actually printing out the pictures or doing scrapbooks themselves. There's only like one, maybe two pages in each person's book. <laughs> but anyhow, so I've got all this paper and some of it, oh God, isn't that beautiful? I mean, it's beautiful paper and you can't get it anymore. So, a lot of the time, I thought that would make a cute Valentine's card, but and some of them had these big words, you know, different words on them, and I've cut the, I fussy cussed the words out and used them on things on projects. But anyhow, I thought, you know, it just sits there. <laughs> I'm going to use some of it to make the file folder because I needed. It's real heavy cardstock. I'm talking away and I've, I had stepped away from the camera so you probably didn't even hear that. Anyhow, it's a. It's, you hear that? It's a real heavy cardstock. So that is just ugly. <laughs> and I'm going to use it as the back. I'll use this as the front. That'll get worn off in the filing cabinet, but that's okay. Now I know as crafters we have a thousand tools. But I'm going to tell you, see, I have the Tim Holtz. It has the metal strip, so you can cut against it. And it has the center point, which is great. Those little tiny holes don't actually, I can't get my pick through it or a pencil lead through it. Those little tiny holes are nice, and they're every eighth of an inch, but they're just a little too small. I'm not sure what they were meant for. But anyhow. I do love this, but I wanted something wide enough for these strips I would I cut a lot in quilting, which are two and a half inches. So I wanted a two and a half inch, and I tend to work a lot at my desk. This is my computer desk. It's a corner desk, and so it wraps around each side of me here. And this is this tiny little space I'll work at. And I'll sit here with some, you know, something running on the computer, listening to a show or something, and cut strips of fabric out. I have, you know, I put mat down, and I have discovered that this is ideal also in paper working. Because though all of these have all these measurements in that, sometimes you need to be able to really get into it. So, let me get this out of the way for a minute. When you're just wanting a one inch strip and you're fussing with all that other stuff, and I've got grippers on my quilting rulers, so I can, it will also grip it, and I can put this right up against that edge, and I'll use my roller, and I'm not actually going to cut it, all right? My roller is gone. Ah, I put it up. Heaven forbid. And then and I'll just roll it across. I dealt the blades rather fast on this glass plate, so you might want to put something else down. But I've discovered I love this particular ruler for right here in my desk. Small area. Now back to the file folder. So... I want a particular file folder. 
for my particular book. And I measured it so my front I'm going to make out of this. And it needs to be 8 and 7 eighths by 11 and 3 quarters. 11 and 3 quarters wide. So this is supposed to be 12 inches. I really should only have to take up. Well, if I could see my little numbers. I even colored in the full ones. Can't see the line. There it is. All right. I know, painful to watch, isn't it? If I'd break down and put my glasses on. <laughs> now, see, I can guarantee you that's crooked because this strip is crooked. Let's try getting both ends on there. I have this huge cutter up above me that works great and it's self sharpening and all this, but it's so big and bulky, it doesn't fit in this space. So it rarely gets used. And back when I was working and making some halfway decent money, I bought that thing. It cost me a fortune. It, you know what? It's cutting it. I know it's crooked, but it's not cutting it even. Come on. There, finally. Well, that was painful. Eight and seven eighths this way. Ideally, I want them to come out, somebody to make a cutter that works basically like this one. This is a roller. It, this has got the small blade in it, roller, and they'll cut through heavier stuff. They're more reliable. <laughs> Those little tiny blades, I go through them a dime a dozen, man, and I get tired of paying for them. But with much better numbers, I went over this with ink, trying to darken it up. They just don't make it easy on you. And it's floppy. So you look. it looks like, okay, you've got a lip there, but you don't. Because if you look, there's a gap. So if you're meeting up here and here, you're not meeting up there. They need to make one that actually meets up. <laughs> Otherwise, you end up cutting your paper crooked. And I hate throwing away my paper because it got cut crooked. Okay, so this is going to be the front. And I have this tiny little... I do have the big one that you can hold in your hand and... These things work great. I'll just round this out. See, off on either side. <laughs> you, you see me reaching up, reaching up. I got a trash can right down here on this side, under my desk. And on my right side, I had my husband install... Oh, this has been decade ago, I bought the paper sorter, or it's like mail slots almost, but it's the width of letter, you know, like just your eight and a half inch kind of thing, paper fits in it. I, at that time, this, I couldn't find anything that had for 12 by 12, so I went with this, and I then the slots don't all have paper. So I've got box cutters and hole punches and just everything. It, it, one spot, I took out one of the shelves and put an electric pencil sharpener in there. I've had that pencil sharpener since my sons were in, since I homeschooled. 99? into 2000, 2000. Yeah. That didn't last a real long time, but I did homeschool. I'm going to cut this side because I can feel that stickiness from the the adhesive at the, from the top. Now, this is the width. And I will tell you one trick when you're cutting paper. 
If you button it up against here, then roll towards that. If you butt it up down here, then roll backwards. So if you've got it up on top and you roll it this way, it's more likely to move and shift on you. So you always want to go towards the end that you've butted up against your brace. All right. Now for the height, I need 10. That's going to go away. Scoreboard. Okay, I went on. through years ago. This is a really old scoreboard. <laughs> and I put like half an inch I used a lot. Three, six, nine, and twelve. For, you know, just to help catch my eye. But if you get real close, you'll also see other markings. There's an arrow down and an arrow up for something I was working on. I've colored in the slot on this end here for something I was working on. <laughs> I'm not shy about it. I'll, if I if I want to color it, I color it. It's mine. I'll do what I want. Where did I Okay. On the long side, we need a half inch cut. So it's coming off of the 10 inches here, but this is to connect the front and the back, okay? And because this is so thick, I'm going to run it on both sides. I mean, this is a thick cardboard. All right. Don't worry about any other, the other scoring I've got there. I just do those things. Now, at the top is where my tab is going to be. I'm going to flip it over. This is going to be actually the inside. This will be the outside. So from the front, you're going to see a white spot for the tab. It just makes more sense to me. But it's going to stick up a half inch. And since I know it's going to stick up a half inch, I'm going to go down. Let's see. I want my tab two inches. No, I want it three inches. So, one, two, three. I'm eyeballing it. That should be about right. So, I have a visual for that. I can go up here. Just tilt that there. This one, the, it's a real thick board, like I said, so you're going to just slowly, if I tried to force it all at once, it would crack. So I just kept running my nails back and forth through it, slowly bending it forward. And now I can get that to stay. And at the top, I'm going to get my other cutter. Sorry. This thing does cut like a dream. And it, but visual, can't see it. Funny, you turn on all these lights for the camera, all it does is glare for me. My eyes, I'm squinting like crazy down here. All right, that way I can set it right on there. Come on. And now I can just cut it. Ta-da! We just saved that too. I do have a board to cut
cut those with. I don't know if I really want to fuss with all that. I'm just going to trim it with my itty bitty ones. I just want it rounded slightly. For some, you've got all these corner punches, but you can't use them on something like this. Now, this one I could. So, I can get to that one, no problem. But I can't, you can't get to the other one. They need to come up with a better idea. That's all I'm saying. Better idea. I think it needs to be a little deeper. To blend more so with mine. I wish you could. I've tried. Ooh, ooh, nope. Almost. Ha! Well, it's a closer anyways. We got it closer. Now, I have noticed something. Over the years, I've got all this fancy tape, and I don't know if it's the weather that does it or what, but some of the stuff I've pulled out, and they came apart. I've got a folder up there, up, up way up over in the corner, full of all the scrap pieces of paper that I'm always going to use and don't. And when I pulled it out the other day, the bottom came loose. I had used tape runner, you know, the double-sided tape on it, and it had come loose. So, I'm going to use glue. And I spoke about this in my little yakety yak that I had done earlier. See, I was supposed to be making a notepad today, and instead, where's my rag? Instead, I sat down and started this, just trying to clean off the desk a little. I'm going to run some of this down. And yes, this hole's a little bigger than a lot of glue bottles, so it tends to be a little messier. That's all right, cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it all over me anyways. You just don't want a whole lot of glue. That's the problem, cause it's water based, and paper will absorb it, and then you'll have a mess. So. take these, they're supposed to be cut the same size, right? Of course they're off by a hair. Oh well. It's a problem with water-based paint. But it gives you a little time to move things around how you want them. That's good. That is not a fast drying glue the way I use it with my Elmer's and Tacky glue mixed together. I did forget to cut that corner there. All right, so now that I know those are, well, and then it slid. Now that I know those are even, I'm going to sit here and rub it. And the friction causes heat, which causes it to dry faster. You don't want a lot of heat on it, but a little friction from, you could use your fingers too. I'm just used to using rags. Just want it to cause it to dry a little faster. Do you see that slight warping right there? That's because of the type of glue I used. Oh. 
ha. I do have better glues if it's something for someone else. I, I use those. But when it's just something I'm going to throw in my filing cabinet, I'm just not worried about it. Having a little warp. Actually, I just got that one out. Now I'm not going to write on it at this point because I don't need to. <laughs> oh, wait. I don't want to do that. Hurt my book. This book is from 1996. And, you know, I never actually did a single one of them patterns. <laughs> Always meant to. Between work and this and that and the kids and... Mostly just me, I guess. There. So now, I can just put my book in there with it not stapled together and slide it in my filing cabinet. All set. But that's how you make file folder. It's really easy. That's a standard file folder. See? I mean, if you've got one, you could always just trace around the edges. But I can give you the measurements. You can't really read it. My ink pen was running out. But, where's a marker? Not that marker. All right. The front section was eight and seven eighths by eleven and three quarters. In the back is ten by eleven and three quarters. Now on the back section you're gonna have bump 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 and That'll be your tab. And that'll be your score line. So that's a half inch there. And that's a half inch there. Okay. Now you can just do it. If I can get it straight. Do a screenshot. There you go. <laughs> you don't have to measure or anything. I did it for you. Thanks for joining me. You have a great day. Bye-bye.